Hey everyone, I'm building an entire first-person shooter game from scratch in the Gato engine and documenting the progress with these tutorials. In this video, we're separating our weapons field of view from the rest of our rendering scene and fixing issues of rendering depth. The basic FPS controller project from episode one is available for free on GitHub. And if you would like to download all of the source files, you can get access by joining my Patreon. Let's dive in. The FOV or field of view for our camera determines what the player can see and ultimately defines the viewing angle of the camera. We already use this feature to create a small effect when we slide. Unfortunately, this effect can have unintended problems when having a weapon that is so close to the player and fixed to the camera. We end up with a distortion that we don't want. Additionally, our weapon also gets clipped when the player is too close to an object. One solution is to separate the weapon rendering to another viewport and camera so that the field of view for the weapon and or player model is separate from the field of view for the rest of the environment. Doing this will also allow us to adjust the environment or weapon FOV without affecting the other and also fixes any clipping issues. Another way is to adjust what is called the projection matrix of our weapon mesh using a custom shader. We're gonna cover both. First, we need to add a viewport to our player controller. We use the sub viewport container node and set the anchor preset to full rect so that it covers the entire screen. Then we add a sub viewport node as a child, which will hold a camera 3D node. Our sub viewport also needs a few setting adjustments. First, we set our background to transparent because we're layering it on top of the player camera and we're just going to render our weapon in this viewport. We also have to disable handle input. Next, we need to size the viewport. You can do this manually or set the size via script. A script can be attached to the sub viewport where we set a screen size variable to hold our vector two. Then in our ready function, we set screen size to equal get window.size and then our size to equal our screen size. This will set our viewport to our window size when we start. To use two different camera layers, we need to create two different 3D render names one for our default or world, and one for our weapon. You can do that by going to Project, Project Settings, General, Layer Names, and then 3D Render. Now within our render layers, we can distinguish between our world and our weapon. Let's set up our weapon scene by creating a new 3D scene. It will contain a 3D node as a parent and then a mesh instance 3D node for our weapon mesh. If you're using the crowbar mesh, you'll likely have a GLB file which contains all of the mesh information. For our mesh instance node, we just want our mesh resource. To get that, we double click on our crowbar GLB file and enter the import settings. Then go to meshes and click on our mesh on the left side. Within the import window, you can save individual parts of the import to file. And we want to save our mesh as a mesh resource. We set save to file as enabled and save our mesh inside our file system and click re-import. Now we can select our new mesh resource in our mesh instance 3D node and with our mesh within a visual instance 3D child, we can set which render layers we want the weapon to render on. In our case, we don't want it to render on our world layer and we do want it to render on our weapon layer. Then within our two cameras, we can call their respective rendering layers. For our player character, we don't want to render our weapon, so we call our weapon layer. Then in our weapon camera, we call our world layer. We've now separated the rendering of our world and weapon model, meaning we can set two different field of views and our weapon will always be rendered last. Finally, we need to match the weapon camera transform to our player camera transform. We can easily do that by attaching another script to our weapon camera where we get our main camera node and set the global transform of our weapon camera to the global transform of our player camera. There are, however, some downsides to this method. First, dynamic lighting needs to be set for all layers. And there is a performance cost to do this because there's an additional render pass. And for myself, I've not gotten dynamic shadows to work all that well with the weapon. That's why there's another solution we can use that doesn't require a whole additional viewport. Rather than create a whole new viewport and render pass, we can create a custom FOV and fix our depth clipping issues by using a custom shader on our mesh. With the viewport we just created disabled and our weapon mesh rendering again on our world render layer, we need to convert our mesh material to a shader, which we can save as a new resource. Our new shader gives us access to the shader code. 
where we can make adjustments to the rendering of our mesh. We're going to use our vertex function to adjust how the vertices are rendered based on an FOV variable that we set. This will separate the FOV of our weapon from the FOV of our player camera. With our shader open, we add a new uniform variable FOV set to 77 or whatever preference your FOV is. Then within the vertex function, we create a new float called scale that recalculates our projection with this function using our set FOV variable. We then set our projection matrix values as follows with these two lines. And that may sound like magic to some of you and it kind of does to me and frankly, that's fine. We don't all need to know 3D rendering mathematics to make a game, right? Just know that you're altering how the mesh is rendered within your camera view. Those lines alone will separate your field of view. These final two lines will minimize any clipping with the environment so that your weapon mesh does not go through walls. You should now have a separate FOV weapon model that also is affected by dynamic lighting and shadows. One issue I did have was with dynamic spotlights. The shadow appeared reversed and in full honesty, I wasn't able to figure out a way around this. So if you spot something that could be fixed, let me know in the comments. My band-aid solution was to duplicate the mesh instance 3D node and weapon mesh in my weapon scene. The second node would act as a dummy shadow mesh. My custom shader mesh had shadows turned off and my dummy mesh had cast shadow to shadows only. This gave me an unaltered depth projection for my mesh and accurate dynamic shadows while also keeping my custom FOV and depth shader. Both solutions have some caveats and even Gato Engine founder Juan Lenietzky replied to my Twitter post saying they should include some default option to separate FOV or depth for FPS games. Going forward, I'm sticking with the shader option and will incorporate that into my weapon system setup. All right, guys, if this tutorial was helpful, consider it a like and subscribe to the channel as we're gonna be covering a lot more. Thanks to all of my patrons who keep this series going. You too can get access to the project source files by joining my Patreon. You can download everything there and you'll also get early access to my videos and sneak peeks at future tutorials. Thanks for watching and as always, keep creating.